one of the reasons why the Tyson plot uh, is unique and useful for the global forest geo network is that it, it has a great story. So 30 years ago, there was a plot set up in the tropics on an island in Panama, Barro, Colorado Island. And it was the first time that tropical biologists had gone to an effort to tag, map, measure, and identify every single tree bigger than one centimeter in diameter. At the same time, there were two ecologists, Dr. Victoria Sork and her graduate student, Carol Hampy. They had the foresight to establish a, a four hectare plot 30 years ago before this global network ever existed. Uh, this was the first tree that was, that was tagged in their plots. So across this landscape here, in this four hectare section, we had about 5,500 trees and tree number one just fell over a couple summers ago. So that's recorded as a mortality event in our data set. All the other trees, we go back and remeasure their diameters at regular census intervals to track growth rates. One of the, the challenges in, in any biology project, ecology, environmental science, etc., is doing large-scale comparisons across the world. And, and the big challenge is making sure that you do comparisons where the methodology is similar across sites. And so one of the benefits of joining the Forest Geo Network, the methods are standardized. We first tag the trees, identify them, and then we go in and measure their diameters and we map their locations. And so the way we census the trees are we work off of this permanent grid. We can then calculate the latitude, longitude, and elevation of each tree within the plot. All of the protocols for measuring tree sizes, tree locations, growth over time, tree mortality, other things such as seed dispersal, seedling biodiversity in the forest understory, litter fall, environmental variation, it's all relatively standardized across the global network. Another unique component of the, the Tyson plot is it's one of only two or three plots that are located in the Midwestern United States. As many people are probably aware, the Midwest has been particularly prone to extreme weather events such as droughts over the years. And the way that we're studying that is by using uh, small temperature sensors called eye buttons. The idea here is that you would like to create a heat map that shows variation in temperatures across the landscapes, particularly between these high and dry ridge tops versus low-lying valleys with, with higher soil moisture are a key component of explaining why different species of trees are dying under drought conditions. A major benefit of joining the, the Forest Geo Network is we can go beyond Tyson, beyond Missouri, and see the extent to which climate change is influencing forest dynamics and ecosystem services in a general way, or perhaps uh, in a more specific way across different types of forest ecosystems.